a wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss some of the recent, and I guess super unexpected results, coming from a survey known as DESI. And in this case results that almost definitively suggest there is something wrong with modern cosmological models, and there is definitely something missing from the explanations in regards to how the universe is expanding. And in this case, even though the results are still not 5 sigma, or basically they're still not definitive, the level of significance here is high enough to actually raise a few eyebrows. And so let's talk about exactly what this new report is, what the new study discovers, and why this is, I guess, kind of important. At least when it comes to understanding the universe. But here, a really brief reminder. This is actually something that we've discussed before, specifically less than one year ago, because a similar report was released last year, but based on a much more limited data. You can discover more in the video in the description, but in essence, in 2024, there was already a bit of a hint that something here is basically not adding up. DASI, or Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument, by observing 450,000 quasars, discovered that the dark energy behaved in a way that was not predicted. And to be more exact, it basically discovered that the so-called cosmological constant was potentially maybe not so constant which was very unexpected and obviously created a bit of a problem for modern cosmology. And because of these grandiose first discoveries, DASI continued observations and continued its primary mission, trying to figure out exactly what dark energy is and trying to figure out how the universe is expanding, which is precisely what it's been doing for the past year, and it was able to collect data about way, way more galaxies, from a lot of different distances, from a lot of locations in the universe, which allowed the scientists to create this beautiful three-dimensional map. And so in this case, these latest results represent approximately three years of collected data and contain roughly around 15 million quasars and different galaxies, or approximately 30 times more than last year. And this shows us roughly around 17 billion years of history, so basically not from the beginning of the universe, just the more recent times, in essence discovering the exact distance and the exact speed for each of the galaxies it was measuring. And so here, by knowing the exact distance and the exact speed, which is achieved using spectroscopy, we can then figure out how fast the universe seems to be expanding in every direction, and thus make some conclusions about the expansion of the universe, and even figure out how the universe might end. We'll come back to that point in a few minutes. And basically here, everything is about this cosmological constant, also known as lambda, also known as Einstein's constant. You can learn more about this in some of the links in the description, but in essence, for many, many years now, this was always believed to be the main explanation for why the universe is expanding and actually is accelerating its expansion as well. It was essentially believed to be this constant, lambda, in the Einstein's field equation. So essentially something that seems to be the part of the universe, or some kind of a fundamental constant that causes the universe to expand. There were obviously some other explanations, but most cosmologists and most physicists always explain this basically as a kind of a fundamental constant, something that's already in the universe and something that could be related to quantum effects and the idea behind vacuum energy. But the main point is that it was supposed to be constant, kind of like the speed of light, kind of like gravitational constant, except that in this case this was a repulsive form of gravity. But because in the last decade we've been discovering a lot of inconsistencies with this constant, with the biggest issue being known as the Hubble tension, the video in the description talks about this more. This is why DASI became a project and why the main point here was to basically observe the universe and then through direct observations try to basically come up with some potential conclusions. And so one of the main results from this recent study actually focuses on something very intriguing. Bow. Baryon acoustic oscillations. Now if you don't want to watch that previous video that explains it, let me briefly cover exactly what this is because this is a super fascinating concept. And a concept that's sort of visualized right here with these enormous circles. Technically, I guess it's spheres. And these bows are technically actual structures. These are basically sound waves from the beginning of the universe. Here we have to imagine the universe in the first 379,000 years. Back then, the universe was essentially kind of like a super hot soup containing a lot of matter, but also containing photons that actually had a lot of trouble moving through. And that's because during this time, everything around them was essentially like this super hot plasma. This is when the universe was still super hot. And this lasted for the first 379,000 years. 
But then we reach the point known as the recombination. This is when the universe cooled down just enough for all of this hot soup to finally cool down, which led to the formation of the first gas in the universe. This was no longer ionized gas, it was no longer plasma, it was basically just pure hydrogen and helium. And at this point, light finally was able to move through and finally escaped, which we now detect as the famous cosmic microwave background. This is basically that escaped light from the early universe. But prior to its escape, when it was still inside the plasma, because the light here could not move much, it actually ended up pushing on everything, basically because photons also produce just a little bit of momentum. And because the universe was not perfect, and because it had certain overdensities, at some point a lot of these very tiny overdensities would actually become a source of something else. Because here we had a little bit more gravity, they would obviously attract more matter toward them, and since a lot of this matter was also pressured by a lot of this trapped light, trapped photons, all of this started to form a lot of pressure moving against gravity, eventually forming a really bizarre interplay. An interplay between gravity and the pressure, which basically produced these very strange sound waves, or these fluctuation waves that were moving everywhere across the universe as a result of photon pressure interacting with gravity. And these were very likely extremely powerful, because once again a lot of this light was just simply trapped and was constantly and constantly pushing on the gas. And so basically they formed these really large bubbles, growing larger and larger in size. But, based on modern theories, we know that at some point the light escaped. As I mentioned, this happened 379,000 years following the Big Bang. And so once this light escaped, all of these bubbles suddenly froze in place. They were already really large, and there was no longer any push from anything, which basically resulted in these really thick overdensities, spherical in shape, with a very specific size. Mostly because we know in this case, the light traveled for approximately 379,000 years, constantly pushing on the matter. And based on modern calculations, we know that these bubbles were very likely approximately half a million light years in radius, or basically one million light years in diameter. This was at the redshift of 1089, or basically when the universe produced its first light. And this is essentially what the scientists refer to as BAO, baryon acoustic oscillations. Or, I guess in other words, matter sound waves. The sound waves, or the music, of the early universe. And the thing is, they would have stayed the same size, approximately a million light years across, if it wasn't for the expansion of the universe. And so the modern models predict that, as the universe started to expand, over the past 13.8 billion years, these bubbles grew so big that they're now supposed to be roughly around 500 million light years across, or 500 times as big. And knowing this, we can essentially try to figure out how fast the universe has been expanding, and thus use these bubbles to calculate the cosmological constant. But I guess the question is, how exactly do you find these bubbles, and how do you measure them? Well, we actually had a previous hint about one of these bubbles in the video in the description, but in general, what these bow bubbles represent is basically a kind of a foundation, or I guess a kind of a scaffold, for the formation of future galaxies and future galactic clusters, because in this case, along the edge of these bubbles, this is where we find most of the overdensities. And so we actually expect to find more galaxies and more mass inside of these spherical formations across the universe. And so far, all of the studies we've had seem to confirm this and seem to actually suggest these bubbles do indeed exist. And more importantly, they have become bigger over time. But the main question Desi and this recent study were basically trying to answer is, have they been growing as predicted or have they been growing faster or maybe slower? Well, based on the previous calculations from the last two decades, we have very specific expectations about their growth. As I mentioned before, their current size is expected to be exactly 490 million light years. And this process would have created a very specific separation of matter with very specific overdensities every half a billion light years. Unless, of course, some of these bubbles crisscross, in which case we should be seeing some bubbles in the middle of other bubbles, which is kind of what you see in this image. And in cosmology, this is referred to as the sound horizon, the concept that's often used to calculate the overall expansion of the universe. And though obviously we don't expect to find every galaxy along the edge, we actually do expect a significant preference for most of the galaxies to basically be separated by this bizarre sound horizon distance. The distance that should decrease as we look back in time and as we find much older galaxies. And so technically this is also used as a kind of a standard ruler when it comes to measuring distances. And so in this recent study, lots of different researchers from lots of different countries and different universities essentially compiled the biggest analysis to date 
using approximately 15 million different galaxies and different quasars, with the main point being exact measurements of these bubbles across large parts of the universe. I'll also obviously compare this to some of the previous discoveries from previous studies in order to find out what's actually happening. And this was then also combined with the data on type 1a supernova in order to make the results just a little bit more accurate. You can find all of these studies in the description below. And one of the first main discoveries in this case was that a lot of data seems to agree with many observations from other telescopes, which of course suggests that the main picture, or I guess the main assumption about Bao and overall universe expansion, seems to be kind of correct. But there was a big problem. And this problem seems to appear as you try to go back in time and as you start comparing this data with some of the similar predictions using cosmic microwave background or that earliest light. And so when comparing this to the CMB observations and predictions about Bao, there is actually a noticeable difference. The circles in this case don't match. Or at least don't match if you assume that constant to be constant. With the measurements of the observed tension having significance of approximately 2.3 sigma at least. Which in physics doesn't mean that it's certainly correct, but it does suggest that there is something going on and that we need more data. In this case, significance is higher than last year. And in essence, what this data basically tells us is that the DASI observations of these circles or these spheres suggest that there is a certain amount of stuff that seems to move at certain speed. But the calculations from CMB and from the earliest universe seems to suggest that there is actually different amount of stuff and it moves at different speed. Which obviously makes absolutely no sense because we're looking at the same universe. And since before this was potentially explained as mistakes in observations or erroneous analysis, this excuse can no longer be used. Every single year we get a new study using different analysis and different observations, basically giving us exactly the same answer. The accelerated expansion of the universe seems to have changed over time, suggesting there is actually no cosmological constant, or that it's not a constant. Or at least suggesting that this mysterious dark energy seems to behave differently. And so here, in at least one recent study, Ryan Keeley and his team kind of tried to explain this, assuming that the constant and the dark energy evolved over time. With these evolving models or changing models for the cosmological constant, or technically I guess cosmological variable, suddenly fitting really well with the observed data. And so here, by combining the cosmological variable with observations of supernova and observations of baryon acoustic oscillations, we actually end up with a really high significance value of 4.2. Not 5 yet, but pretty close to it. In physics, the sigma or significance value of 5 usually means that something is almost certainly there. But obviously this is just an observation and it provides zero explanations. First of all, we obviously have no idea what dark energy even is, but here we now have a new problem. Dark energy seems to also change over time. Which obviously means that either we have an entirely new fundamental force that technically nobody wants to deal with because it creates a lot of new problems, or as this new study suggests, maybe the universe has more than four dimensions. In other words, it's almost certainly scientists are discovering completely new physics here and currently there's really no explanation. Except for maybe two potential explanations we've discussed previously that you can actually learn about in some of the videos in the description. One of them is in regards to fluctuating form of energy known as quintessence that might explain the universe expanding over time differently, but the other one is even more exciting, the idea known as the timescape cosmology. Basically here, maybe there is no dark energy and all of this is just the result of observations based on Einsteinian principles where time just starts to act differently in certain locations in the universe. This one is actually my favorite right now because it does actually make some really cool propositions. Once again, the video in the description. But naturally, because this is such an exciting observation and such an exciting discovery, we're going to have a lot of new studies coming out about this, and there are going to be way more observations by different telescopes. And even DASI observations are going to be continuing because it's not actually finished yet. Here, eventually, we'll have five years of data, and right now, this was based on just three years. And so we still have at least two more years before final data comes out and before researchers come up with some final conclusions. With well, the final question that I wanted to answer is, so what exactly does all of this mean? At least for the universe and for our future. Okay, not like your future and my future. The future of the universe, if you know what I mean. Well, in this case, if dark energy changes with time and if the cosmological constant is actually a variable, one day the universe could actually stop expanding and eventually start collapsing. Which means that instead of continuously expanding and eventually ripping apart, 
the end of the universe might actually be what's known as a big crunch. Basically here the ultimate fate of the universe is a kind of a recollapse where everything once again becomes super hot and eventually maybe becomes some kind of a tiny point, potentially restarting the Big Bang once again. With this animation, I guess, kind of showing us what might happen. Which of course would also suggest that maybe cyclical cosmology has a point after all. Maybe the Big Bang we have now is just one of many such events that happened in the past, and maybe there's going to be another one in the future. Not like near future, very, very, very far future. Because it will actually take a very, very long time before the universe starts collapsing once again. Here we're talking about possibly trillions of years, but very likely much longer. But anyway, at least for now that's basically all I wanted to mention. Super exciting discoveries and new exciting mysteries, but no definitive answers yet. Which means that we'll come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos in the next few months. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, Bye-bye.